Hi guys, this video is brought to you by outtalk.co.uk for your post, pre-match and Sheffield Wednesday discussions with fellow Wednesdayites. Hi guys and welcome to another Sheffield Wednesday update kind of video with little bits of rumour thrown in. I'm not a big fan of talking about rumour when it comes to it but I'm going to do it anyway because end of the day there's a couple of things that need to get talked about and in terms of what might be happening at the club. So let's start with the Manfield Town game. Uh, let's be fair, losing to them, I wouldn't have taken too much of an issue. It's just the after fact with everything that happened with Fourth Dieri and the actual melee on the pitch. By looking at it, it looked like Fourth Dieri didn't do too much wrong apart from the tackle. Then they overreacted. If he had punched someone in the face, that needs to be looked at, that needs to be fined. We're going to get a fine anyway. Both sets of teams are going to get a fine from uh, the FA. That is just a matter of fact. That's going to happen. There is going to be a fine for both of us for not being able to control our players. And the thing about Fortier being a racist, I'm pretty damn sure if that had, if he had said something, I'm pretty sure one of our lads would have pulled him aside saying that's not on. And Fortier would know better not to anyway. I can't see him as said it, saying it. Now let's talk about the whole situation with Kieran Westwood. So Westwood at the moment is in his final year of his contract. I believe he's 32, 33 age-wise. Had a little bit of an injury problem last season. And in an interview for the star, apparently Don Housen had the quote from the manager saying he picked up a little bit of a knock uh, on his knee. Uh, and we're just going to judge it from there, but he'd be fine in that training session. And then he came out on Twitter and said, I've not been injured all uh, pre-season. It's a bit as I felt. Um, he's also turned out, as he said, he missed one training session. That's been it. So we're getting conflicting um, conversations here from a player and the manager. So it's a bit weird to know where we're coming from and what's going to be happening. Now, Stoke are interested in Westwood, as are Cardiff, as are West Brom, I believe. They're all interested in Westwood. Now, a lot of people I've seen saying, if Westwood goes, oh, it's going to be really bad for us. Uh, I don't rate our chances going up as it is. And if we lose Westwood, it's going to be an issue. We have two very good young keepers at the club who are more than willing to step into that role. They showed that last year. Wildsmith did great. Dawson did great. Uh, he's also got, uh, I think his name is uh, Wills coming through as well. I get people wanting an experienced championship keeper. I understand that. But at the same time, if we don't give the kids the chance in game time, What's the point? What's the point of having a youth set up if we're not going to give, give uh, the kids a chance to play? There's no point. And they both show last season that they are both capable of stepping up and doing the business. Now, I do believe that, personally, I preferred how Dawson played at the end of last season, but at the same time, Wild Smith was great. He'd been great ever since he stepped in. So it'll be a nice little battle between them. And now you've got Nicky Weaver being the goalkeeping coach, which is really good to see that we've promoted within again. And it's also good because he knows the club. He's a Wednesday fan through and through. He's been um, with the club for a while now with the under-18s. And he's also got that thing where he worked with Andy Rowe before, so Andy Rowe will have passed on a lot of his information and knowledge to him to pass on to other keepers. And it just seems like the right thing. But the whole while uh, Westwood thing is interesting for me because at the end of the day, he's in his last year of the contract. He will be on some big money. And we are trying to cut the wage bill. Now, if you look at QPR, QPR has agreed to pay, I think it's 44 million, I believe. Uh, I just found that out today. But they are transfer embargo till uh, 2019, January 2019. Let me just come up. 41.95 million for breaching fair play rules set to trap by embargo until January 2019. So, 
we don't want that kind of situation. We don't want to get into a situation where we're going to have to pay a huge chunk of money as a fine and then not sign any players anyway. People are already talking about us already being in a transfer embargo. If we are, then we are and not a lot we can do about it. If we're not, we just keep on going from there. But I think we've got the right stuff to let the youth of our system come through and become those players we need them to. Because Palmer's really the only one that's really survived out of that lot that came through with Beavers and Fur. And we need to start using the youth academy more. That's where you're going to get the players that you're going to build on and go for the future. And we'll see what happens, but with any luck, we'll be able to get the whole situation sorted. At the end of the day, transfer window shuts on the 31st. Loans are on on the 31st of August, so we have to see what happens there. We may bring in a couple of loans. Remember, I think that we can only play five. So we'll see what happens, and let's just enjoy this black pre-season game against BRL. Don't forget to have your say at altalk.co.uk after the match.